Uh, we're gathered here tonight on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. Uh, I'm incredibly uh, grateful for our opportunities to uh, learn from and on the land uh, on a night like tonight. Uh, so this is another talk in our series of talks leading up to the big day on April 8th, where we'll have a total solar eclipse visible from right here in Kingston, something that hasn't happened for hundreds of years and won't happen again for another few hundred years. So it's an incredibly rare event. Uh, make sure you grab some information about the solar eclipse at our desk outside. Uh, and if there's still glasses available, please make sure you get some of those as well. Uh, we will be giving out glasses at events like these ones leading up to the eclipse and on the day of the eclipse. Uh, tonight, we have a great talk from Malcolm Park. Uh, Malcolm is the president of the Royal Astronomical Society Kingston Center. Uh, he's extremely passionate about amateur astronomy and astrophotography. Uh, he has his own backyard observatory, something of which you know, I'm incredibly jealous. Uh, and his works, his photography has been featured in many magazines and newspapers. Uh, he was also the coordinator of StarFest 2023, uh, which is one of the largest uh, amateur astronomy conferences and star parties. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to pass you over to Michael, and I'll look forward to seeing you all upstairs in the warm room of the dome. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Who told you all that stuff? Um, well, thank you for the invitation to present on the eclipse tonight. Um, I am an avid uh, eclipse chaser, although I came to the uh, to the activity late in, in uh, compared to many of the people that I know. Um, first thing I'd like just to introduce myself um, and turn on my clicker or just use the mouse pad or, or start all over again. <laughs> Lawrence, there we go. Um, so Royal Astronomical, Royal Astronomical Society of Canada's mission is to enhance understanding of and inspire curiosity about the universe through public outreach, education, and support, support for astronomical research. And uh, this would be considered outreach. Um, I am hoping to uh, describe the total solar eclipse experience and um, give you an idea of what's going to happen, uh, why it's majestic, and um, some of the things that you can expect. Um, just along the ways of uh, some introduction about me, I do chase storms uh, for fun, and the tie-in with astronomy is that weather has a lot to do with both. So knowing when the skies are going to clear um, and when it's going to be stormy is, you know, if you're not doing one, you can do the other. Um, I've traveled around different parts of North America and in fact the world in order to um, chase either um, events like a meteor shower in Arizona or to go to uh, South America and uh, experience the dark skies down there where I have a telescope. I do astrophotography down there. Um, this is the Milky Way from San Pedro to Atacama and the difference between the view of this uh, from here versus Chile, you would see this sort of on the horizon from here. And in Chile, it's, it's at the zenith, which is straight overhead. And then this is a, an image that I've taken with my telescope down there. So the, the, uh, the, the topic is the, the total solar eclipse. And the first thing I want to ask anybody out here in the audience is, has anybody seen a total solar eclipse? Anybody in the audience? Yeah. Not a lot of you. That's cool, because when you see it, it's going to blow your mind. Um, there are adjectives. I've, I came up with a number. I, I don't know what my, my favorite of the list is, although um, spiritual-ish, um, spellbinding, mesmerizing. I mean, they all apply. And uh, hopefully you'll get a chance to see uh, on April the 8th. Um, what's special about a total solar eclipse is among other things, 
that in order for you to be in position to have an eclipse go over you, you have to wait a very long time. The um, frequency that uh, an eclipse will repeat uh, is approximately 375 years. So we're here, we're in the path, this is a unique opportunity. And it is the single most impactful adventure, event in nature that you will likely ever see. You might see the aurora, you might see a lunar eclipse, you might see a beautiful sunset. Nothing will compare to this if you are fortunate enough to see it. Um, and, and why? Because you will see through the daytime sky out into the universe into the universe beyond in a way you have never dreamed existed. You will see the alignment of the planets and the sun, and you will understand your place in the solar system. And knowing that, you will feel a connection to the universe like never before. And the result of all that is often an emotional experience. Um, and I say this in full knowledge of the um, average age in the audience. Um, in your lifetime, and you're gonna have a lot of opportunities, but this is this is as good as you'll get. In your lifetime, you owe it to yourself to at least once put yourself in the path of totality of the shadow of the sun. And on the 8th of April, you will never have a better chance because it's coming to you. You don't have to do anything. You just have to wait. So the total, total solar eclipse, um, phenomenon is, is based on an alignment of the sun, the moon, and the earth. And if the moon was, this, th in this case, the moon is at new moon. If it was full moon, the moon would be over here and you would be getting a lunar eclipse. There are two sections to the uh, shadow of the moon on earth. One is the umbra, one is the penumbra, which is to say the umbra is where it is a total eclipse and the penumbra is where it's partial. Now, I've included on my slides here an image of a total eclipse and an image of a partial eclipse. It's important to understand how important it is that you don't settle for a partial if you're outside <laughs> the path of totality. If you get a partial eclipse, you cannot look at the sun without a filter. You can only look at it with a filter. This image on the right is, is an image of the, of the moon in front of the sun revealing the corona. And it can be experienced without a filter. Now, the other important aspect of this, I won't go into a whole bunch of details about eclipses because it's, it, the, the, the point here is that the, the moon uh, orbits the earth on a tilt to the ecliptic plane. And so if it didn't, if it, orbited on the ecliptic plane, we'd get an eclipse every month, we'd get a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse. But because of this five degree tilt, the frequency with which that intersection occurs is just a couple of times a year. And then those events happen randomly across the globe of the earth. So um, you could see an eclipse probably, um, at, at some time in the future, uh, if you made plans to travel to it, but um, you don't need to because uh, the, the path of totality is coming to us. This is the 2017 eclipse, and it just shows you how big the, the shadow reached, how much reach it had. It, it, it covered most of the continent. So most of the continent had at least a partial, and that's exactly what's going to happen on April the 8th. Most of the continent will have at least a partial. And how often, well, I mean, this, this is a, a chart showing eclipses from 21 to 30. And the uh, orange ones are annular solar eclipses and the yellow ones are total solar eclipses. So here we have the uh, April 8th eclipse. South America gets one, two, three, four annular eclipses. So they're, you know, they're, they're all over the place. Um, but the fact that we're getting this path of totality right through us, again, one in approximately 400 years, um, doesn't happen in that way very often. 
Um, and the other thing is the alignment of, of the moon in, and, and the distance between the earth and the sun of the moon. The moon is at that perfect distance where it will cover um, the sun. Unlike on Mars, for example, where they have an eclipse from time to time, but you wouldn't even know this had happened because there's there's never a, a chance that uh, at least I don't think that that uh, Phobos is going to block the sun from the surface of Mars. So we are lucky in that the distance of the moon from Earth is such that it will give us that perfect covering of the disk of the sun. However, the orbit isn't a perfect circle. So there are times when the orbit of the moon takes it further away from the earth at totality. And in this case, it's called an annular eclipse where the moon being further away from earth doesn't completely cover the sun. And in an annular eclipse, they sometimes call it the ring of fire. You will um, see the moon as a black circle, but you can never look at it without filter. Um, glasses or filters on your optics because again straight sunlight coming through you never look at the sun if there is state straight sunlight coming through on the other hand a total solar eclipse provides safety and the ability to see the corona of the sun and again partial eclipse this is a time lapse sequence that i captured and here's the thing, right? As I don't know how many of you know who Maxwell Smart is, but missed it by that much <laughs> isn't gonna cut it. You have to be in the path of totality. And, and settling for a partial eclipse is like saying, I got five out of six numbers in the lottery. whoop de doo right? <laughs> so, you have to be in the path of totality. Just uh, about my uh, my eclipse chasing, these are some of the spots where I have, I have been to attempt to see an eclipse. I haven't always been successful. The red dots are solar eclipses. The blue dots are lunar eclipses. Um, this one here in the middle of the Pacific Ocean was an atoll that happened to have an airport that happened to be in the path of totality just off of Tahiti. And the tour was broken up into two groups so that the odds were sort of distributed. There, at least, uh, you know, we had two groups that would have a chance that wouldn't be clouded out. I was in the clouded out group. On the other hand, being in Tahiti isn't all that bad. <laughs> so, uh, the same, a similar thing happened over here in China. I went to Shanghai. I knew what I was getting myself into in this case. I really enjoyed Shanghai. Um, hopeful that there would be an eclipse, but I got clouded out there as well. And then we have um, uh, annular eclipse on the Grand Canyon, Idaho, and our eclipse coming up. This was a partial in Chile and Cairns, Australia. But you don't have to chase always to see eclipses. This one happened pretty much in our backyard on uh, June the 10th, 2021. Uh, it was an annular eclipse, but for our purposes, it was a partial eclipse, and it rose in, um, uh, in, in, in partial eclipse, and this was a view from the dock at uh, Sydenham Lake. And then again, um, on the tw uh, 14th of October, 2023, this is a view from the back deck of my house, partial eclipse with a filter, camera handheld, a quick snapshot. Uh, one one thousandths of a second exposure at 200 millimeters. Um, as I say, I, I went to the annular eclipse, an annular eclipse in 2012 in the Grand Canyon in May. These are the um, contact points. Can't remember which is first and second, but uh, there's um, something about traveling when you're when you're uh, trying to get yourself in the path of totality because then you end up in places like this. And, and this was effectively my view. This, this is my setup uh, for the, uh, the annular eclipse. And the sun set pretty much over there. 
And it kind of looked like that at sunset. And that was pretty cool. Um, now, I want to demonstrate how the shadow of the moon moves across the horizon of the sky. So the first thing I have is a, is a short time lapse. And I'll let that play. And this is from Idaho in 2017. You watch over to the right, you'll see it darkening. And then because it's time lapse, it's very fast. So that's that's the time lapse. But what I what I did was I, I put the uh, sequence in my uh, video editor, and then I just played with the timeline and drew tried to drag it back and forth slowly. So you, you get a sense of I'm going to rock it back and forth, so you feel that the, the size of the shadow of the moon and and, and, the, and you can actually sort of sense it. So there's this, this um, sense that you have just before totality of something looming on the horizon in the West. And it's just the shadow of the moon. But, you know, when you first detect it, when you first notice it, you might think, is there a thunderstorm on the horizon? There's this darkness there that you've never experienced before. It's, 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 um, quite intimidating if you don't know what it is. You can imagine that it would terrify people, you know, centuries ago that had no idea what was what was going on. Um, so this is a photo from that, that time, lapse, time lapse sequence. <clears throat> and it's kind of my favorite photo of that, uh, of that event, really, um, in that you see so much. Like along the horizon, it looks like sunset. But it looks that way in 360 degrees all the way around you because you're in this cone of shadow. And so on the outside, outside of totality, where the, um, the people who didn't try hard enough are, <laughs> um, they are looking at the sun with filters and, and, and it's, it's still light out. So, and then, oh, I don't know if you can see it. Is there, there's a star up here. Yeah, that's Venus. Um, I can't recall if we could see any other uh, planets. Mercury, I have a photo that I believe has Mercury in it, and it might have been right there. Jupiter was on the horizon, so it was too low. But like everyone is looking up at the uh, eclipse. That's me. I'm looking up at it with binoculars. If you have binoculars, use binoculars. Make sure you have filters for the uh, partial phases of the eclipse, but binoculars it was the best view I've ever had of, of, of the eclipse. And you can see here, cell phone works. It's great. Um, now, this was earlier in the sequence. No one's looking at the sun. Nobody cares. Well, they care. It's partial. But you shouldn't be looking at the sun all that much. And really, all that's going on up at this point, you know, you can look through a, a telescope with filters. I've got filters on my telescope here. But um, the real, the real again, this is a partial, right? I'm going to harp on this. Totality is what will get your attention. And the partial phase is OK. So this is us. And uh, the path of totality is defined by the, uh, the range of totalities between these two uh, reddish lines. And the center line, the blue line, is where the greatest uh, time in totality is. And I drew these blue chord lines on here just to give you a sense that as you move away from the center line, those chord lines get shorter. That means the amount of time you have in totality is getting shorter. So the objective usually is to get as close to the center line as possible. So Fort Erie here for Canada is close. And off the map, I'll show you that later. Uh, Sherbrooke, Quebec is almost on the, on the center line. You can get to the center line up there. 
But um, another example of the difference between totality and partial, uh, Westport is like 99.99% totality. And it will probably look something like that. But that's enough light to harm your eyes and you shouldn't look at it without a filter. All they have to do is go a minute or two down the road to Newborough and they'll be in the path of totality and, and Newborough gets a whole minute. So it's, there's no effort required really to just get on the other side of that line and get in the path. Um, but the partial phases of the eclipse before and after totality last about 73 minutes. And you can use your eclipse glasses and viewers to um, uh, watch the progression of the moon across the face of the sun. You can look for sunspots. Those are sunspots right there, which is kind of cool. Um, you can also make uh, projectors. Uh, if you don't have uh, solar filters, that's not a big deal. This guy here has... Um, uh, put a telescope and uh, pointed his eyepiece at a cardboard box with a piece of paper. And then this is another design for a pinhole viewer. If you poke a hole in a piece of tape, it will project onto whatever you put behind it, the image of the eclipsed sun. And then you would just look through the little, little hole, but you can do that in a number of different ways if you're creative. Also during partial phases, the Shadows of, uh, that are cast by the sun develop crescents. And in fact, you could just use a, a strainer, kitchen strainer to, to um, display that yourself. As you get closer and closer to totality, the amount of light coming through gets less and less and you start to fi find it breaks up. And this is called the Bailey's beads effect. And what is going on there is that there's so little light coming around the limb of the moon, that the mountains and valleys, the peaks and valleys on the moon start to break up the light. And when that happens, there's an effect called shadow bands that, um, that is the thin, thin light coming through at the last minute, shining, if you put it, you need to really see it best on a white board or a white piece of paper. Um, and it's basically the light just shining through the atmosphere and, and, and as the atmosphere uh, scintillates, it causes these um, bands of shadows and they're starting to come up now. And this is just about a minute before totality. So I haven't spent a lot of time myself looking for these. They are an uh, effect to be seen during an eclipse, but the fact that this was recorded is excellent because at this point in time, it's just before totality, my attention tends to be more towards what are my, my filters on my cameras and all of this stuff. But this is, this is the uh, effect of, the, of shadow bands uh, as the eclipse just about, we're almost at totality, maybe 15 seconds from it. The closer you get, the more dramatic it becomes. And this is an image of the uh, uh, Idaho eclipse at totality. And when you finally get to totality, uh, you get to see the corona. And the corona is the prize. It's part of the, the awe of experiencing an eclipse and being in the shadow of the moon. You can see magnetic field lines. And, um, and in fact, photographs don't really do it justice. So we try to do enhanced photography. This is called high dynamic, high dynamic range photography where a number of different exposures are, are layered together in Photoshop. And, and we try to reveal as much detail uh, as we can in the photo, but still it, it doesn't do it justice. And then there's another effect in, in a solar eclipse where there's just before Bailey's beads or just after, depending on which way which side of the totality you're on, um, the light from the moon creates this bead on the, or this, this diamond ring effect on the limb of the moon. And this is called the diamond ring. One of my uh, eclipse chasing 
uh, adventures took me to Palm Cove, Australia, north of Cairns. So it's in the, the tropics of Australia. And, uh, you know, I, I hadn't, uh, I haven't chased that many, I, as I say, like five or six uh, solar eclipses. And this one, looking at the uh, weather prospects, we were thinking we had a bad feeling. This is the morning uh, that that is Venus up there. Still see some stars. It's a kind of a longer exposure just to uh, to to get the uh, the stars and and uh, Venus. And then here's sunrise, clouds everywhere, right? But mir miracle of miracles! Look at this hole that opened up for us. Unbelievable! So lucky. Um, so I did go to Australia with my wife, but she skipped the eclipse, and that's fine. <laughs> There, there were three reasons, valid reasons, that we went to the eclipse. Um, my, my, she was my fiance at the time. Uh, she has a sister in Australia, and she wanted to uh, spend some quality time with her and uh, her niece in Melbourne. That's, you know, that's great. I wanted to spend some quality time with the, uh, with the sun uh, and the corona, and. After the eclipse, we went. I went back down and I joined her and we got married yeah. in Australia. Um, and, and so this is a, a photo of some of my friends in Australia that I traveled with in Cairns, uh, well, north of Cairns, Palm Cove. And I want you, uh, I, it's not much of an introduction, but I just want to introduce you to Andreas Gauda. And this guy is a wonderful photographer. And he took some imagery of the eclipse. This is his equipment here. He had a couple of uh, cameras here. He had one here. He did all this stuff. It's wonderful. And I thought I would share it with you. Um, in the uh, sequence that you're about to see, he overlays the partial eclipse on top of a, and synchronized it with the timing of another uh, time lapse that's the wide angle view. So he's got the wide angle view and the, anyway, let's, uh, let's watch this because it's fantastic. So it's pretty incredible that we got to see that. We were lucky, eh? The, the clouds just opened up for that 
period of time when uh, when totality occurred. Um, the 2017 eclipse, I saw that one, I drove. Those are three spots that I considered viewing it from. One was in Nebraska, one was in Wyoming. The first one looked cloudy, the next one looked, well, not cloudy, there's a difference. Cloudy is um, is what provides precipitation. And then there's the high, high thin cirrus. And so that's what the problem was in Nebraska. I, 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 I didn't want to stay for that. Same with Wyoming. Idaho was perfect. Uh, two minutes and 16 seconds of totality. I drove 7,000 kilometers for that. I'm driving zero for almost exactly the same thing in Harrisburg. The scenery along the way, uh, spectacular. Wildlife, spectacular. This is the morning of the eclipse at the um, Roberts, Idaho location. There I am setting up my stuff, getting ready to go. The crowd is buzzing. Everybody's just like the anticipation. This is Adriano. I met him before the eclipse online. We were friends on Facebook and just happened to end up in the same place in the middle of nowhere in, at, at the eclipse. And he is an Italian Australian. And those are, ah, uh, uh, oh, geez, I pushed the wrong button. Sorry, <laughs> those are funny. This is his work. That's, that's what he shot with those telescopes. Um, all kinds of characters at the, at the eclipse. I couldn't resist taking that photo. A again, a reminder, look at the eclipse with binoculars if you get the opportunity. Um, during um, the partial and total phases, it's, it's, it's an amazing way. These are the owners of the property in the middle and they shared two photos with me that I, I can share with you. This was just before totality. Look at the quality of the light with a cell phone. It's ethereal. There's just something weird about the light. And then this is the photo that uh, I believe he took this with his cell phone. And I think that that's Mercury. I cannot confirm, but I believe it to be true. Um, this is another time lapse. And this one will show, will, will, um, this is in real time. And it's, I shouldn't call it a time lapse. It's simple GoPro videos. The GoPro camera is set on the trunk of, or in the hood of a, a truck and it's two minutes long and it watch over this way for it to get dark as as the shadow approaches from the west and you might see a planet you might see venus up there and then the horizon you get that 360 degree um sunrise sunset color You see it? Um, from uh, this very location, this is the sequence that I put together. The pink bits are prominences. And of course, there are sunspots there, you can see. And the, um, the crew celebrating a successful eclipse. My first eclipse was in Egypt. And it was, um, it was, it was amazing. Um, I went with my daughter. Uh, we flew from Toronto to uh, Italy and then connected Alitalia, Italy to uh, Cairo, and we spent uh, 10 days or something like that in Egypt. 
Um, on the way back, we anticipated that this route would be exactly the same. Uh, Alitalia had a wild, wildcat strike. And so our travel agent was traveling with us and she rerouted us through Morocco. So we flew Cairo, Morocco, Montreal, Toronto on the way back. And back in 2006, think about this. 2006 was the year Facebook opened its social network to the world instead of just being a university thing. That's how long ago that was. No longer did you need to be a student for, for access to Facebook. All the parents got involved. Um, and there were no iPhones. The first iPhone came out in 2007. So what are we recording with? We're recording with camcorders. And here's the thing. Uh, I had a camcorder with me. I put a camcorder on a uh, tripod and I recorded the eclipse. And then we went in to do some sightseeing the next couple of days. And the tape that was in the camcorder got rewound and overwritten on. <laughs> so I do not have a personal recording. Having said that, um, and it was my, my fault. I couldn't blame anyone. <laughs> it was all my fault. I was in charge, right? Um, so uh, fortunately, I do have a, a recording from very nearby, and it, it almost did. In fact, it does. It's a better recording than I had, fortunately. So I do have something to show you. Um, and here's the thing: some things to watch for. When it gets dark, it gets dark quickly. The temperature drops, and someone comments on that. There are prominence prominences visible. Someone's saying uh, solar flare in the in the video. I don't think so. I'm what I saw. I, I saw prominences, and it's more likely uh, the solar corona glowing ghostly white. Um, planets, maybe stars. City lights might come on. The 360 degree sunset. The diamond ring. The Bailey's beads and the shadow bands. So those are all things that might you might see now he'll transition a minute later look how much darker it is just one minute How old are these people? Oh, 
I'm somewhere down there. And that's the best photo I have of me and my daughter ever. And that's my uh, first eclipse show, shot from uh, Egypt. And what those guys said in the interview is like, that's, the, you, you can't say it any better. And it's the moment after the eclipse, you're thinking that, um, yeah, I think I want to be an eclipse chaser. And I had that thought too. Uh, our event, the moment of greatest uh, eclipse is in Mexico. And as the eclipse progresses, um, the times get shorter. Um, all the way from Leamington to Miramichi, uh, without having to go to Newfoundland, it's visible. And it ranges from three minutes and 45 seconds, I think, in Fort Erie. Uh, you can catch the edge of it there in Coburg for about a minute. And this is what the, um, the shadow looks like, the umbra in the middle, the penumbra on the outside. Most of North America gets partial, partially eclipsed. Where you look for the eclipse on eclipse day is in the southwest. So this is the direction of totality. The pink lines obviously are the path of totality. These lines here are sunrise and moonrise and sunset and moonset. So from Kingston, you're looking southwest. And when you're looking southwest and during totality, there's a good chance that you're going to see Jupiter and Venus. There's a, always a possibility that you'll see Mercury. It's not, obviously it's not as bright. Everything else is, you know, maybe with binoculars. Uh, but, um, you know, there's a possibility Sirius might shine through. I don't know. Uh, <coughs> eclipse photography, you have to be careful. Uh, if it's your first eclipse, um, probably it's getting late to start thinking about what you want to do photographically. There is a period of time where you, um, you need to know uh, that you're centered and things like that. So you use the back of your LCD screen of, of a DSLR. You don't look at the sun through anything that magnifies those, those rays during uh, partial phases without a filter. Um, we do take our filters off for, photo, for photos uh, leading into totality, but the camera is taking the risk, not your eyeballs. Uh, some filter, solar filter uh, retailers in Canada, Telescopes Canada, Ontario Telescopes, KW, David Astro, All Star, Astronomy Plus, 
They are selling another uh, manufacturer I forgot to mention is Kendrick Astro. Uh, these guys are quality manufacturers and um, trustworthy retailers. You could go to Amazon easily enough and buy stuff, but I wouldn't trust it. This is the kind of thing that you might find uh, with Daystar filters. These are basically just uh, adjustable things for, for lenses. Taking photos with your iPhone can be fun, uh, but you know there's considerations for how you're gonna shoot. If you're gonna shoot with uh, you know, a video in mind or stills, and if you're doing anything time-lapse, you want a tripod. If you're using a DSLR, you want a cable release as well as the tripod, so you don't touch it and shake the camera. And if you're doing longer focal length, you might want to have a tracking mount, which will keep everything centered for you. Uh, wide angle and time lapse, I kind of bucket into the same category. Time lapse photos are where you, uh, you, you put your camera on a tripod, tripod you just uh, take a series of exposures and uh, review them after the eclipse. And in this case, upon review, I selected this one. Close up, longer focal length, and a simple snapshot of the um, eclipse at totality. Um, on the other hand, composites add another degree of complexity because you have to change the shutter uh, settings and perhaps the ISO in the middle of totality to get the extra detail. Uh, just make sure you turn your flash off if you're using a cell phone. The last thing you want is A, annoying your neighbors. But I mean, if it even finds focus to take a photo, you, uh, you need your, your flash to be off. But I could, I could do a whole talk on astrophotography for eclipses, but there's no need. These guys, uh, Fred Espinek and Alan Dyer, have everything covered. You can find Fred, I have a bunch of links at, at, on the last slide. But they, um, for example, some of the stuff that Fred provides, it shows you what are the differences in magnification with different focal lengths of lens. What are the camera settings for shutter speed with, if you know the ISO and you know the F, F focal number of your uh, optics, you just drop down here to get the exposures for the different things. Partial, Bailey's beads, chromosphere, prominences, corona. Um, you don't need to figure it out. If you don't, you're probably not gonna know ahead of time. So this, this chart helps you out. And then Alan Dyer, he'll tell you all about uh, shooting composites, stills, wide angle stills, close up stills, all of this stuff. Um, I bought the book, uh, it's, a, it's a great buy. Um, there's an app for your phone that will tell you what's going on when it's happening live. Basically what you do is when you install the app, it costs $1.99. Um, it takes a GPS re uh, reading from the location that you're going to observe. And using that GPS data, it will announce to you 30 seconds, five seconds, filters off, et cetera, et cetera. And so this is a, a dry run using the um, Eclipse video practice section just to give you a sense of, of what that looks like on your phone. This is a practice session. Starts uh, two minutes before totality. So if you're looking at your phone, it's telling you um, this is what you can look for now. And it's... Sixty seconds. So, observe for shadow bands. How I intend to use this app is I'll have an earbud, and you know, forty seconds. Observe on the approach. So remember, that's that's the shadow of the moon approaching from the west. 30 seconds, hands on camera filters. Good to know. Twenty, remove camera filters. Fifteen. Ten. Five. 
four, three, two, one. Glasses off. Glasses off. That's it. And there are other reminders during totality, and then it, it takes you out as, as well. So for the, for the uh, price, I think it's because uh, you can lose track. You're, you're hanging out with your friends. You're looking around. If you got something telling you what's happening. Um, I'll just briefly talk about weather and, and, and chasing. Um, this is the best place to see the eclipse weather-wise for cloud cover. And the red is the, the least favorable. We're not in the least favorable. Um, Mazatlan is the most favorable, effectively. But on April the 8th, 2021, Mazatlan was cloudy and we were clear. So what does that tell you? Um, I did take these, uh, uh, this was on January the 18th. On January the 18th, the forecast for January the 21st, okay? So looking ahead three days. This was the satellite from January the 18th where it's just lousy. And it says in three days, that white area, that's clear skies. It says, we're gonna have clear skies in three days. And you know, you never know, <laughs> right? This is enough for us. Do we care about everybody else at this point in time? <laughs> there are some tools for forecasting cloud cover. One of them is Astrospheric. Uh, there's a link for that in uh, on the last slide. Uh, on our website, the Kingston Center of the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada, we have a link to a page. We have all of these uh, clear sky charts for different locations. Again, it tells you whether it's cloudy or clear. On that same page, we have safety, weather, eclipse times, maps and animations, what to look for, plan your eclipse, helpful links, a lot of which are mentioned in this talk and suggest observing locations. Some of these observing locations are places that you might want to go. I know a few people that have looked into Wolf Island and, and uh, they're going to take a chance and not hope that they can not get stuck in traffic. Um, you know, if, if you get to this point a few days before the eclipse and there is a risk of the cloud, it's at these times that I start to, in the back of my mind, think, okay, I need a plan B here. So from Kingston, Miramichi is 11 and a half hours uh, drive. <laughs> I drove to Idaho, it's nothing. Or Leamington is five and a half hours drive. Now, Miramichi, I could do that in a day. So let's, let's just say that's in the back of my mind. Ideally, if it's cloudy in our area, I'd love it if, if it was clear in Sherbrooke because they're on the center line. But these are the options and, and, and the other consideration is traffic. So I'm, I'm gonna show you this graphic. How many people here do you think that are not in the path of totality are going to try to get in the path of totality? A great many. So I'm, I'm thinking the longest of eclipse is, is down here near Fort Erie. So a great number of the Toronto and, and GTA folk are gonna to try to come around to Niagara. Peterborough folk, they're not going through Toronto to get here, I don't think. So like we'll get some of the Toronto folk and, and Peterborough folk and and a little bit of Ottawa, because in reality, Ottawa has a shot at the center line. So Ottawa, Montreal, Quebec City, all, all these people probably, probably, no, I don't know, probably converge at Sherbrooke. So finishing up, um, to have a total solar, solar eclipse experience, you must be in the path of totality. Have I said that enough tonight? The path of totality, is, um, is this, you can find the path of totality on maps that I'll provide links for. Um, never look at the sun directly in partial phases or through an eyepiece or through a camera viewfinder. Don't look through a sun, the sun, the, look at the sun ever during the partial phases unless you have protective eyewear. Um, and don't waste time troubleshooting a camera issue, especially if it's your first eclipse. The important thing is, is that you see it. 
That's what this is all about because you will have the most amazing experience, I believe, of your life. And that's, that's my talk. Thank you. Thank you.